this uh, regular meeting of the HCIC trustees to order at 6.31 p.m. The meeting has been posted in accordance to the Open Meetings Act and pursuant to Governor Abbott's temporary suspension of open meetings. This will be an audio video meeting. We do have a quorum with everybody here present. Before moving on to our moment of silence, uh, I just want to say real quick that at HCISD, we do embrace diversity, and our district, district continues to teach students to treat each other with respect and tolerance. I ask that you keep our country and our leaders in prayer as we attempt to heal our nation. Next, we'll move into the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Mr. Shane Schubert. Thank you, Mr. President. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. May be seated. <coughs> Thank you, Shane. Let's uh, move right along. Uh, with the approval of minutes, uh, item 2A, the May 12, 2020 regular board meeting. Do I have a motion? Mr. President, I move that the minutes be approved as submitted. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Greg Powers. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Mr. President. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? Aye. All right. Uh, that motion is approved. Uh, and 2B, the spe June uh, 2nd, 2020 special board meeting and budget workshop. Do I have a motion? Move for approval as presented. We have a motion a by uh, Dr. Perez. I second the motion. And a second by Ms. Jerry Perry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, we have those minutes approved. Next, we'll move on to public comments for agenda topics. We have there are no public comments. Thank you. Uh, and next, public audience for non-agenda topics. No okay. public audience. All right, thank you. Next, we'll move on to the approval of our consent calendar. Do I have a motion? Mr. President, I move that we approve the consent calendar as presented by the staff. Thank you, Mr. Powers. We have a motion by Mr. Okay. Greg Powers. Do I have a second? That's right. And we have a second by Dr. Reininger. All those uh, uh, in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. We'll move on to item number six, matters related to transformation and school support. Uh, we have a transforming teaching and learning committee report by Dr. Elisa Riola. Dr. Riola? Thank you, Mr. President, Dr. Gavasso, board members, senior team and administration. Um, last Tuesday, May 5th, we held our transforming teaching and learning committee meeting. At that meeting, we had two presentations that were brought forward for discussion. The first presentation titled 2020 Summer Programming Models was an opportunity for us to share with our committee the models that are currently in place within our summer programming. As you know, the Commissioner of Ed and Governor are allowing uh, summer programming to take place. And so this week we began that summer programming. Within our summer, we instituted three different instructional models, instructional formats. Uh, we have some face-to-face uh, sessions that are going on. We have some fully virtual sessions that are going on as well, as well as some hybrid models. And so as we are working our way through our summer programming, we're exploring the logistics behind offering these various models. As we think about what fall instruction will look like, we want to make sure that ultimately whatever direction the state uh, decides fall programming should look like, that we have uh, instituted these models to some capacity and, and if and when that time comes we would be able to pivot in whatever direction. We continue to get more direction from the state. Uh, today they put out some additional guidance and so as this guidance is coming through we're wanting to make sure that we institute them. Uh, it's one thing to, uh, to say we're going to go in a particular direction but it's really difficult when you haven't put it into, into process and so that's a lot of the work that's happening within our summer programming. Um, within our face-to-face -face programs, there's a number of those programs that are happening. Some of those are happening within the Beyond the Bell Enrichment Program. 
Some of those are happening within the summer school programming. And then we also have some summer programs happening in our uh, athletics and fine arts uh, programs. And so all of those are being instituted across our district, had tremendous response from the students. Uh, really excited to, to have an opportunity to be back at their schools. A lot of smiling faces, teachers excited to see kids. So it's been a, a very positive experience. But within all of that, we are wanting to make sure that we're safeguarding both our students and our staff. And so we did extensive work in ensuring that we had put in safeguards uh, to ensure the safety of everybody involved. But uh, and everybody has been very responsive. Our, our staff has been tremendous. They developed very detailed plans uh, to institute their summer programs. And so those have been going off very well. We're very excited not just at having our kids back, but also having the opportunity to explore all these different models so that when the time comes and we open schools in the fall, we'll, we'll be prepared to carry that out. The second item was presented by Melissa Parker. Uh, that presentation was entitled The Impact of pre AP Fall 2020. Uh, and so we talked at that presentation about some of the changes that College Board uh, who oversees all the pre-AP and AP programming are bringing into place. They're doing a lot of streamlining of courses. And so within that streamlining, they are uh, minimizing which courses can utilize a pre-AP designation. And so uh, with those changes, there are changes that will happen to the coursework that we offer in our district. And so those courses that will no longer have a pre-AP designation, we will be titling those as honors courses to designate that that is advanced coursework. And so there are some policy implications that we'll be talking about later this evening, but that were also discussed at our policy committee. Uh, those changes are not scheduled to take place until fall 2022. However, uh, the first students impacted by those changes in fall of 2022 will be our incoming freshmen. So we wanted to make sure that uh, we have begun the communication plan with all of our students and our families so that they are they know what is coming uh, with those changes in fall of 2022. Um, we had a brief discussion also as we talk about uh, GPA. So as you all know, with the COVID-19, we had to make some adjustments to uh, our GPA policy and or I should say temporary adjustments to GPA policy as well as grading. Um, there's a lot of work that is happening this summer to address some of those gaps that we found as we tried to transition into remote instruction. And so we are confident that with the changes and, and uh, plans that we are putting into place that we won't have a need to make any, any further adjustments to GPA and that in the fall we should be able to be in a position to keep the current GPA that we have in place and not have to make any adjustments as we did in the spring. So those were our, our two topics for discussion. Dr. Belinda Reidinger chairs our Transforming Teaching and Learning Committee, and so I'll turn it over to her for any additional comments she may have. Thank you, Dr. Nayola, and, and thank you for the great committee meeting. You know, I think that the theme that I really took away from this meeting is you know, planning for the fall, planning ahead, thinking through what we need to do this summer and springboarding that for our preparations in the fall. And, and as always, I commend, uh, you know, the HCISD uh, senior leadership team for, for doing just that. It, it, it becomes strategy rather than reactionary. So we heard um, really clearly that those various uh, formatting options that are used, being used this summer give us insight, give us appropriate lessons learned as we move into the fall. So I'm really excited about hearing about those plans. Uh, you know, as a, as a community, you know that the, um, you guys are thinking through all of these elements. And, and the reality is that everything is rapidly changing. And so if we're not putting into plans, in, into place these plans and testing out strategies, we really will not be able to rapidly adjust as the ball keeps um, kind of coming at us quickly with um, COVID-19. So great work being done there. The pre-AP ball, um, you know, 2020, I think it's great that um, the College Board is really streamlining and tightening up what is, is going to be counted as pre-AP. Um, courses and 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 getting um, you know we're in line already we're ready we know what we're doing the honors courses is a perfect designation for this 
And so, again, planning ahead, I think this really looks good. And then finally, again, planning ahead on GPA. Done the hard work in the um, in the spring. Uh, you all have put together some really good plans for um, the, the technology institutionalization and the internet access and, and all of that. So we will be ready for the fall. So the, the uh, GPA piece is really strong too. So great meeting. Um, and once again, you know, just glad to be uh, aware of the of the actions that's happening in HCISD. Thank you, Dr. Reinigan. Thank you, uh, Dr. Nola, for that uh, report. Uh, I'll open it up if anybody has any questions or comments about that presentation. Mr. President, I just want to commend yeah, this. I just want to commend the district, and again, um, I think uh, the Chair Reininger summed it up nicely, and, and uh, uh, Dr. Noel, I just but want to commend the district on all the heavy lifting uh, they're doing um, to see us through these times, uh, and also, um, you know, really uh, uh, making some really uh, robust plans to hybrid learning and remote learning, and uh, um, I think this district is going to be in a much better place as a result of all this, and so Thank you for 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 for, for this uh, 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 really groundbreaking work. It's not easy, um, um, but I think we're doing a remarkable job and we're getting better at it. And I think the more we can get the word out, the better. But just wanted to commend uh, the senior team and, of course, all your principals and all the teachers for really uh, making their commitment to continuing instruction and as best we can. And I know a lot of these opportunities are going to continue over the summer and, for, and perhaps into the fall. And so. Um, uh, we ought to keep taking advantage uh, of being in the cutting edge of, of learning. And so thank you all for what you do. Thank you, Dr. Bettis. I'm sure we all agree with you. And thank you to the committee and the senior team and everything. Well, uh, we'll move on to uh, item number seven, matters relating to curriculum and instruction. Uh, item A, consideration and approval of instructional continuity uh, attestation while closed miss school day waiver. Dr. Nola. Mr. President, board members, Dr. Brussels, administration, and the audience. TEC code 25.081 requires that all districts operate for a total of 75,600 minutes. Uh, due to the COVID-19, our district closed on March 23rd, and then that was subsequently followed by the governor's executive order that closed all our classrooms uh, and, and, in effect, put our school district closed for the remainder of the school year. So this closure prevented the school district from complying with those required minutes of operation. So as such, uh, the district will need to submit a missed school days waiver or being out of compliance with those 75,600 minutes. Uh, in addition, while Governor Abbott's executive order closed education in the brick and mortar classrooms for the rest of the year, uh, he did note that in order for us to continue receiving funding, School districts were expected to provide continuity of instruction through the remainder of the year uh, of the board approved calendar. So as far as per the guidance that we have received from TA, the missed school day waiver will be granted as long as the school district supported students instructionally while at home, which obviously uh, we, we did a lot of work within that area. So board approval is required for us to submit the Miss School Days waiver, as well as the signature by the board attesting that the school district did, in fact, instructionally support students during this period of, co of closure. Uh, administration recommends, uh, recommends approval of the submission of the attestation and Miss School Days waiver. Thank you, Dr. Ola. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Yes, this is, um, I'm happy to um, make a motion for the approval of instructional continuity at a station while closed slash missed school days waiver. Thank you, Dr. Reiger. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Second by uh, Mr. Greg Powers. Any further discussion? All right, we'll take a vote. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, it passes. Thank you. Uh, next item, 7B, consideration approval of CPR instruction requirements waiver. Uh, Ms. Veronica Cortez. Uh, Mr. President, board members, superintendent, senior team, and audience. Um, we are bringing forward the consideration and approval of the CPR instruction requirements waiver. 
as we have been studying the COVID related uh, waivers that are, are available. This is one of the waivers that we're bringing forward. So based on Texas Education Code 28.0023 and other applicable rules in 19, uh, in 19 Texas Administrative Code 74.38, all of our students prior to graduation uh, must go through a CPR training. And so um, for our students for this year, we do have some students that were pending that we were going to complete training with uh, in our spring semester. And due to the early closure, the unanticipated closure, um, we are, are bringing forward a waiver um, in the case that we have some of those students that were not able to complete the CPR training for this year prior to graduation. I have been working with Coach Davies and Luis Solorio who um, head this up in our district. Um, and so as we bring this uh, waiver forward, the administration recommends approval of the submission of the CPR waiver as we have presented tonight. Thank you, Ms. Cortez. Do I have a motion to approve? President, I move approval of the uh, CPR instruction requirements waiver as presented. Thank you, Dr. Pettis, for the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Javier de Leon. Any further discussion? Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to item number eight, matters relating to business services. 8A, consideration and possible action to approve a resolution delegating authority to the superintendent to negotiate an agreement with UTRGB, setting forth the timeframes for final execution of the lease agreement and other documents related to the UTRGB ECHS campus and to negotiate final terms of the lease agreement and, and other documents related to the obligations of the parties for the ETRGB ECHS campus. Mr. Julio Colossus. Mr. President, before he presents, I just want to mention that uh, I abstain from uh, discussion and uh, voting on this item. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Perez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jaimez, Dr. Colossus, board members. Uh, tonight, I made a, is a resolution authorizing the superintendent to negotiate the final terms of the lease agreement with UTRGB for the use of the early college high school. Let me just share that that uh, resolution with you here real quick. Uh, so, so this is a resolution that, that uh, our attorney put together that will allow the superintendent to, to finalize the document. Again, this is a 35 year lease on that property that we're building together with UTRGB. Uh, and And, and this will allow the superintendent, you know, to to negotiate the final terms of the lease agreement uh, for you know for this particular property. Uh, the uh, UTRG wanted to get this done as soon as possible, and they, they would like to get it done before we, we break ground. We're almost done as far as the finalizing the terms. Uh, we're uh, pretty much going to be splitting the cost of maintaining and operating this campus. Again, this uh, resolution will allow the superintendent to finalize the lease agreement. It's a 35 year lease agreement. Uh, but, uh, this is a resolution here. It's, it's a 35 year lease agreement that will start when we complete the project. Be glad to answer any questions the board might have. I have a motion to approve. Second. 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 Second by Ms. Murray. Uh, any further discussion or questions from Mr. Lawson? We'll go ahead and vote. All those in, uh, I'll, I'll do that with the notation that Mr. Dr. Pettis is abstaining from this vote. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Gossos. Thank you. Uh, item 8B, consideration and approval of low attendance waiver days for Hardington High School, South, District Elementary, and Travis Elementary. Mr. Gossos. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hyman, Dr. Gossos, board members. Uh, Jen, I may be as uh, consideration to approve low attendance waivers. We did have three campuses that had low attendance, you know, for three different days in, in this past school year. And the low attendance is any time that they have 10% or more uh, 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 of the attendance that they had last year for that particular period. So we had three campuses, Harge High School South, Dishman Elementary, and Travis Elementary that were requesting the board to approve the waiver. And if they approve the waiver, uh, we, we uh, don't use those days for uh, – Average daily attendance, which helps us, you know, increase those, that number. Uh, 
you ask Janice any questions at the board might have? Mr. President, uh, uh, do we go for a motion and then, a que and then questions, or how do you want to handle that? Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll take a motion and a second, and then we'll, we'll open it up for discussion. You want a motion? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion for approval, as recommended by administration. We have a motion by Mr. De Leon. Second. Second by Dr. Ryan. Go ahead, Mr. De Leon. Uh, yeah, I just some just some clarification. Isn't doesn't uh, approving seven A? Wouldn't that why wouldn't that umbrella eight B? Yeah, it, it's a different waiver. You know, eight B is for the average daily attendance. Uh, you know, and seven uh, A is for for the actual minutes. So anytime that we have a, a uh, a difference of more than 10% variance from the previous year, we get to exclude that day from attendance, which helps our average daily attendance increase a little bit. So yeah, I understand that, but all of our schools fell through that. Every well, the, 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 the virus. Yeah. So all of them should fall through that, unless I'm just not understanding. Yeah, th this, is, this is prior to, you know, to the closing of the schools. So, so that what uh, Dr. Neola mentioned was, you know, during the coronavirus uh, uh, time frame, this is prior to that because we are going to uh, get to use that ADA for those first four six weeks. Okay, so so A B is prior to to the, the, the virus, and seven A is F from the, the virus to the end of the year. Is that correct? Correct. So, Prior, the other one is right. it, uh, 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 from from the day we closed on. So there were two different ones. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. Understood. Anybody else? All right. We'll take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Item 8C, consideration and approval of the uh, annual financial report, November 27th, uh, due date requirement waiver. Mr. Colasso. Thank you, Mr. Hymas, Dr. Colasso, and board members. Uh, Jen, item C is another waiver that the you know, TA uh, has allowed this year, and that's for the completion of our audit. Our audit is due November 27th. Uh, we don't anticipate having any issues, but having the waiver gives us a little bit more time to complete the audit. Uh, we're going to, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, work with auditors to get it done by November 27th, but this waiver allows a little bit more time just in case. Two more months. We recommend approval. Got a motion? I move approval, Mr. President, as presented. Got a motion by Ms. Flurry. I'll second. And a second by Mr. Greg Powers. Any further discussion? Uh, uh, Mr. Cross, do, do we get this waiver every year? Is it something we... we 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 don't. Situation. Yeah, this is the first time that I've seen it. So we've, we've never used this you know, type of waiver before. Again, we don't anticipate having any issues getting the audit done. Uh, but just in case, you know, TA did allow this waiver to be uh, granted. Right. You know, also remember that if we do shelter at home and we start because of a spike and we do shelter at home, that means everybody stays home. The auditors can't come in and do their audit. So it may delay the audit. And better take advantage of it also. Yeah. It's a sign. All right, thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. Moving on to item number nine, matters relating to human services. 9A, approval of recommended revisions to local policy EIC on first reading. Dr. Neola? Thank you, Mr. President, board members, Dr. Cavasso, senior administration and audience. We bring forward for your uh, consideration and approval recommended revisions to local policy EIC on first reading. EIC policy uh, oversees all of our uh, GPA programming as well as including all the advanced coursework that applies within our GPA programs. Um, as we mentioned earlier in our discussion on the impact of pre-AP changes coming down from College Board, there are some courses that will no longer have a pre-AP designation. As was previously discussed, those courses will now carry a title of honors to uh, ensure that 
that we are designating designating them as advanced coursework. So because we do list all of these courses in policy EIC local, we have made changes within that policy to denote that these new these courses that will no longer carry pre-AP labels will now be titled honors. And so you will find those types of, of changes within uh, these recommended revisions. Uh, it also identifies which courses specifically are going to be impacted. Uh, in addition, we are recommending some formatting changes to better track the historical changes that have happened within policy EIC. At any point in time, we may have graduates who we are needing for whatever reason to relook at their transcripts and so forth. And so we always refer back to policy that that occurred at that point in time when the student was enrolled. And so the formatting changes we're recommending makes it a little bit easier for us to track those changes and be able to, to understand um, to understand that policy a little bit better as it applied to, to students. Uh, Mrs. Fleurier chairs our uh, policy audit committee and so I'll turn it over to her for any additional comments. Thank you, Dr. Loyola. We had a very good meeting. And there were several of us able to be present, and uh, we certainly appreciate the clarity, Dr. Mayola, that you bring to what could be a very complex matter. So thank you. There's obviously been a lot of, of uh, very uh, intentional research done and study and presentation that you brought forward, uh, I think was very acceptable to all of us. But at this moment in time, I would like to move approval on first reading uh, as presented by the administration. Thank you, Dr. Uh, President Hymas, members of the board, Dr. Colossus. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, my report is uh, brief. On June 2nd, we had a facilities committee meeting. I gave an update on the TRE projects and uh, discussed the Treasure Hills Phase 1, uh, how the contractor accepted the um, directive to put the VCT tile. It's been ordered. And it should be coming in, if not the end of this week, early next week, but they're starting to do some uh, floor prep work out there. The irrigation sprinkler system and all the plants and trees are being planted. And they're doing some work on the air conditioning system that was found by our commissioning agent. Hunt pointed out some things that needed to be tweaked, so they're working on that. And we'll set up some training work with some of our maintenance staff on some of the systems that's, that's new out there. Um, Treasure Hills Phase 2, we awarded this at the last board meeting, a special call board meeting right after the facilities committee meeting uh, to Davila Construction for $6.78 million. Uh, so we've already sent the contracts to our attorney. As soon as we get the contracts back, we'll have the contractor sign it, we'll get the bonds, the insurances, and we'll issue a notice to proceed. So we're very close to getting that project started. On the Vernon World Language Academies, we have phase one and uh, phase two and three. And uh, phase two, they're pretty much done the landscaping they're doing some tweaking work some areas that weren't doing very well they've made some corrective uh, uh, changes to the landscaping and treatments and uh, sprinkler system adjustments and, and they've knocked down that tree and we're going to be scheduling the planting of the new one uh, that's all that's pending on that and then we'll just get the closeout documents and close that project out on phase three we just awarded it to Holchman construction for phase three to do the painting and the interior uh, two-story on the hallways, the uh, finishing out the courtyard, and doing the stairwells back to their original design. So we're, we're having a pre-construction meeting tomorrow at the school. Um, the golf, st golf skill station, we're just waiting for some netting that was coming in. The company had been closed due to the pandemic, uh, and uh, they fabricated it. It's supposed to be delivered Thursday, and they'll put that up, work on the Bermuda seating and that project should be done as well. The early college um, UTRGV project is, was one of our big projects. Also, we just awarded it to D. Wilson Construction at the last special call board meeting for 14.8 million. And uh, we've sent those contracts to legal as well for review. And as soon as we get them back, we'll start getting all those contracts in order. <coughs> and we have a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, some stock here. Uh, June 25th, we're having a groundbreaking ceremony there as well. And then on the Transition Academy, we rejected all bids at the last special, special call board.
board meeting, we've already met with the architect to uh, make some changes, do the rebidding of the project. We've met with uh, Dan, Dan Garza and Joseph Villarreal on the changes. Everyone is on board, so we'll be, we'll be bidding that one out in about two weeks and targeting the um, early August board meeting for, for that project. And then Julio Cavazos gave a <clears throat> update on the construction funds financial report. And uh, then we adjourned. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Greg Powers, our facilities chair, for anything else he may want to add. I have one question, Greg. wanted to ask Oscar, thank you so much. I just wanted to ask Oscar, when would be your estimate of when we might be really um, pretty much complete with Vernon, with the exception of a possible uh, exciting thought about the library upstairs, but when do you really think we're going to be finished with Vernon? And I'm asking that on behalf of a class who's getting ready to have a 60th reunion. Uh, the interior work we're about to start should be done by mid-August. Uh, we'll be substantially complete when school starts, and then we'll, if there's any touch-up, any final uh, pending items, we'll work around the schedule at school, either after school or weekends. But for the most part, I would say by, by mid-August. Landscaping as well? Yes. Okay, thank you. Pass it along. I'll pass it along. Thank you, Ms. Larson. I think in a couple of weeks. If you let him know, since he can walk across the street, then go. Yeah. I'll run a hose across the street. He's got a shovel waiting. We'll, we'll clear it through the board president. He's not there yet. Will do. Uh, we'll, we'll, moving on to item number 11. Approval of school board standing committee members for the 2020-2021 school year. Uh, Shay will be sharing a page, a list of the committees, uh, so that y'all can see. I'm sure you've been notified, so the audience can see. Uh, board members, if you have any questions, uh, I spoke to some of you about the assignments. Uh, before, if you have uh, questions, you know, reach out to us. So. These are, these are the, the standing committee members for the uh, upcoming school year. Uh, it is an action item. So we'll see if Greg will. So if you all are fine with it, it is an action item and we have a, a motion. Motion for approval as presented. Second. We have a motion for Dr. Perez and the second, Dr. Reiner. Who seconded? Who seconded? Javier. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Any any further discussion? I just want to say Greg does a great job, so he's on facilities. <laughs> Thank you. He wants to see that 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 burning through. So, okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 
Thank you. Moving on to item number 12. The approval of campus assignments for board members for the 2020-2021 school year. Again, we'll be sharing the page with the uh, campus assignments for all to see. Mr. President, uh, even though this is the 11th year in a row, Greg Powers has HHS. I move approval as presented. <laughs> as amended. Dr. Pettis uh, makes a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A second by Dr. Uh, Dr. Powers. Dr. Oh. Powers. <laughs> Mr. Greg Powers. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Great. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we're going to move into adjournment to close our executive session pursuant to Texas Government Code Sections 551.071, 551.072, 551.074, and 551.082, the Open Meetings Act, for the following purposes. purposes. Discussion of purchase of real estate. Discuss approval of Barnes and CISD administrators' contracts for 2020-2021 and discuss employment of teachers and other professional staff. We are now in executive session. So let's hold a minute and we'll
talking about. Okay. <laughs> All right, we are now reconvening into open session to discuss or uh, action on matters discussed in executive session. Uh, out of court, take consideration, take action on purchase of real estate. Mr. President, I move that uh, we uh, um, move with the purchase of real estate as discussed in the executive session. Second the motion. I have a motion by Dr. Pettis and a second by uh, Dr. Meeks. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item B, consider approval of Orange and CISD administrators' contracts for 2020-2021. Mr. President, I move approval of the Harlingen CISD administrators' contracts for 2020-2021. Second the motion. A motion by Dr. Reininger and a second by Ms. Fleury. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Vote. Motion passes. Item C, consider employment of teachers and other professional staff. Mr. President, I make a motion for consider employment of of the teachers and other professional staff as recommended by, by administration. We second the motion. A motion by Mr. De Leon, and we have a second by uh, Mr. Greg Powers. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And with that, we are adjourned. Okay, we're, still we're still alive. Good night, guys.